Hello everyone and welcome back to Coombe Valley Campers. Today we take a good look into the new 2019 DVLA requirements for registering your vehicle into a motor caravan. You may have seen that on the 21st of October 2019 that the DVLA have changed the requirements as to how you go about re-registering your vehicle to a motor caravan. Now, in this video today, we're going to cover what you may, why you may want to change the body type, the reasons the DVLA have changed the guidelines, the requirements for changing the body type to a motor caravan, and how to apply to the DVLA. Before we get into why you may want to change the body type of your vehicle, I would just like to clarify that we today we're going to be talking about vehicles with a maximum authorized mass of up to 3.5 tons. If you are unclear if your vehicle is above or below that MAM or maximum authorized mass, please take a look at your V5 certificate or you will find that your vehicle has a classification plate much like this, um, a vehicle inspector plate which will show the gross weight of the vehicle as well. Now the first reason you may want to change the body type of your vehicle is down to the insurance. Now a panel van or and or other goods vehicle may well be more expensive to insure than a motorhome. Now a normal panel van or builder's van um, could be more likely to be broken into but generally the premiums are higher. If you have any doubt about the insurance premiums and please get in touch with your uh, insurers and make sure you do inform them of any modifications you do make to the vehicle. That being said, um, motorhome insurance is generally cheaper than a van. A motor caravan would generally get driven less than a work van or panel van, which is why the premium would come down. Um, you can get an it would be easier for you to get an agreed valuation for all of the utilities you've got in your vehicle as well with the motor caravan clarification and motor caravan insurance. And secondly, uh, now again, it's de totally dependent on the insurance company you go with, but having overseas insurance for longer than say 90 days would be easier with a motorhome, motor caravan classification as well. So the first point that you might want to get your motor caravan classification changed is down to the insurance. The second reason you may want to reclassify your vehicle is down to speed limits. Now, according to the government website, regarding speed limits, a light van, which is a goods vehicle under 7.5 tonnes, is restricted to 60 miles per hour on a dual carriageway. A motorhome not more than 3.05 tonnes can travel at 70 miles an hour on a dual carriageway. Now that is directly from the government website but looking at one of the forms regarding the new motorhome clarification it states the body type does not affect the insurance category of the vehicle or have any effect on speed limits or other legislative requirements. It is only used for establishing vehicle appearance and identification. So, what we're gonna take from that is that the DVLA have some contradicting information on their website regarding the speed and the insurance. There may be a hundred other reasons as to why you may want to change the classification of your vehicle to a motor caravan. If there is, let us know down in the comments and we may even cover a video about it. The next subject we are going to cover is the reasons the DVLA have guidelines. Now, I'm not going to waffle on this. I'm going to read the guidelines directly from the piece of paper. Now, as with all the information we've got here today, I've got this from the DVLA website, Gov website, and I'm going to leave links in the description for all of these for you to download and study for yourself. So, to that end, this document is known as Converting a Vehicle into a Motor Caravan, and again, available from the gov.co.uk, sorry, gov.uk website. DVLA is required to record vehicle details for road safety and law enforcement. The body type information held on the vehicle record must describe what the vehicle looks like in traffic. 
This description, as well as other distinguishing features, allows the police and other enforcement agencies to easily identify vehicles. The body type does not affect the insurance category of the vehicle or have any effect on speed limits or other legislative requirements. It is only used for establishing vehicle appearance and ID. That is a point we've already covered. It is important to remember that even if the vehicle's body type is not changed to motor caravan, the vehicle can still be used for this purpose as long as the keeper is satisfied the converted vehicle meets the required internal features for motor caravans. That's quite a mouthful. Um, and basically what it's saying is, is that if you were to apply to the DVLA for a change of your vehicle category, body type, um, and you don't get that reclassification, you can still use it as a converted vehicle and it can still be recognized as a converted vehicle as long as you comply to the four categories of internal modification requirements and we'll go into that later. The last paragraph. DVLA is responsible for making sure the vehicle record is accurate. To change the body type of a vehicle, DVLA has to be satisfied that the vehicle meets their policy for body types. Requests for a body type change to motor caravan require that your vehicle has external features that can be recognized as those of a motor caravan. It is the responsibility of the converter or vehicle keeper to make sure that any alterations made to the vehicle do not compromise its safety. The DVLA, the police and other enforcement agencies need to recognize, easily recognize your vehicle as a motor caravan. What they also need to do is make sure that your vehicle record is accurate, much like you changing the color of your vehicle. If you changed it from white to black, you need to show them that you've changed it and they need to have an accurate record on their system that the vehicle has changed. Same as a van to a motor caravan, they need to see that those regulations have changed. The last point that is regarding the safety. They want you to know, they want to know that your vehicle is converted safely. And again, we'll get into that later. The last point on this piece, and I've arrowed it and I've highlighted it, is the body type of your vehicle will not be changed unless its exterior looks like a motor caravan in traffic. That's the big thing, that's the big kicker here and that is on more than one of these documents, is that your body type needs to look like a motor caravan in traffic. And again, we'll go into that later, but that is the big kicker here. It needs to look like a motor caravan. So that is why, that is the reasons the DVLA have the guidelines about the enforcement, um, and then it needs to be easily recognized. And again, the big thing is it needs to look like a motor caravan in traffic. The next thing we're gonna get into, and this is really the, the meat of this subject here is the requirements for changing the body type to a motor caravan. Again, I'm going to be reading directly off the paperwork, the guidance paperwork from the DVLA. Again, links to look below in the description. Um, so there's a guideline form and a motor caravan conversion checklist. Again, we'll go over that in a minute. Requirements for changing body type to a motor caravan. DVLA will only consider changing the body type to motor caravan in brackets motorhome if the vehicle meets the following three requirements current body type shown on your v5c registration certificate in brackets logbook now these are the new well, one of the new requirements on the 2019 dvla um, motor caravan reclassification DVLA will only consider changing the body type to motor caravan if the body type shown on your V5C registration certificate, in brackets logbook, is currently one of the th following. Now there are 14. Ambulance, box van, goods, insulated van, light goods, light van, livestock carrier, Luton van, minibus, MPV, in brackets multi-purpose vehicle, panel van, specially fitted van, special mobile unit, and van with side windows. It goes on to say, and it's in bold or in its own separate box, 
if the vehicle's body type, as shown on your V5C in brackets logbook, under vehicle details point D.5, point is not one of these, do not send in your application as DVLA will not process it. And it's clear as that. If, you, if your vehicle is not one of those 14, don't even bother sending it to the DVLA because they're not even going to look at it. The biggest change to the new 2019 regulations is the motor caravan external permanent features and the requirements that you have to fulfil. I will read directly from the paperwork again, just so there's no confusion, and then I will give you my take on what that form is trying to tell us. This list describes the external features which are commonly seen in motor caravans and it is intended to provide guidance on what the DVLA expects to see when considering your application. First one, two or more windows on at least one side of the main body. This does not include windows on the driver or passenger doors. To provide a reasonable amount of daylight into the living accommodation. Now, the reason I've put pause to some of those sentences there is because already on the internet there is argument on what that sentence actually means. The way I am taking it is, is that the vehicle needs two or more windows on at least one side of the main body. So not two on one side of the vehicle, not two on the back of the vehicle, or not two on the other side of the vehicle. It needs two or more windows on at least one side of the main body. So completely disregard the cab, the windscreen, and the door windows, two or more windows. That's how I'm taking it. So all of those currently with a van with windows, a clarification, those who may have been refused a motor caravan application in the past, now their vehicle is a classed as a van with windows. The reason you may not have had that reclassification is that the vehicle you have applied for does not look like a motor, motor caravan, not that it doesn't have the required amount of windows. Long-winded, but two or more windows on at least one side of the main body. The next one, fairly simple, a separate door which provides access to the living accommodation of the vehicle. This excludes the driver and passenger doors. A window on this door counts as a separate window on the main body. So for the likes of van owners, small van owners such as uh, Volkswagen Transporters, T5s, T6s, the sliding door will count as that access door, a separate door which provides access to the living accommodation. Number three, motor caravan style graphics on both sides of the vehicle. This has created a huge rift in the whole uh, conversion world. What is a motor caravan style graphic? How big does it have to be? Where does it have to be placed? Again, all open to debate. We are very interested to know if you have had one of these vehicles reclassified since the 21st of October. Um, and what graphics you have put on your vehicle, please let us know down below or get in contact with us. Um, I believe that will be subjective and down to the person who is considering your application at that time. Number four, an awning bar attached to either side of the vehicle. Awning bar, now again, DVLA haven't clarified this, is that an awning C-channel rail? so you could slide an awning onto it. That is more obvious on the side of a motorhome. I am gonna go with the latter, that it is required that you have a larger rollout style awning box on the side of your van. Now the third one is a high top roof. This does not include a pop top elevating roof. This is the one that is caused the most controversy because 95% of the smaller camper vans like the VW T4s, T5s, even the Transit Customs, Renault Traffic's more so now. The easiest way to increase the space um, effectively is to include pop top. Now, is a van with a pop top roof still a camper van? Well, again, going back to the opening statement that 
Uh, the body type of your vehicle will not be changed unless its exterior looks like a motor, motor caravan in traffic. I believe this is why the DVLA have done this. Um, a lot of custom T5s, T6s keep using that example because they are one of the most popular vehicles. They don't look like motorhomes and they're designed not to look like motorhomes, which is why people have very slim line pop top roofs. Um, DVLA want to move away from that again because they want them to be easily recognized in traffic. The third requirement for changing your vehicle to a motor caravan is motor caravan internal features. And again, this is on a separate document. I will leave a link below and it's, it's something you need to comply to. For a vehicle to be recognized as being converted to a motor caravan, it must meet all four categories shown below. Category one, seats and table one example for both in brackets the seats and table must have the following features they shall be an integral part of the living accommodation area mounted independently of other items a table mounting arrangement arrangement shall be secured as a permanent feature although the tabletop may be detachable permanently secured seating must be fixed to the floor or sidewall and and available for use at the table category two sleeping accommodation the sleeping accommodation shall be an integral part of the vehicle living accommodation area. Can be either beds or bed converted from seats. Must be secured as a permanent feature, either with the base structure of the vehicle floor or to the sidewall, unless the sleeping accommodation is provided over the driver's cab compartment. Now again, very similar to the last iteration of these requirements, this time there are no measurements. So your bed can be any size, they're not gonna check that. Category three, cooking facilities. Your conversion must have a minimum of a single ring cooking facility or microwave, which shall be secured directly to the floor or sidewall as a permanent feature. Now, I don't particularly want to put my hob on the floor, nor my microwave, um, but I'm sure that if it is a permanent feature in your units, which are also secured to the floor, or the storage facilities, which are also secured to the floor, that's gonna be fine. Um, they've also reduced the, uh, the cooking rings to a single ring compared to the last iteration of these requirements. Category four, storage facilities. The storage facilities can be a cupboard or locker form an integral part of the vehicle living accommodation, mounted independently of other items unless incorporated below the seat, sleeping accommodation or cooker, must be secured permanently to the vehicle floor or sidewall, except when the storage facility is over the driver's cab compartment. Again, fairly simple to explain there. Uh, sorry, fairly simple to understand there. Um, they've got to be a cupboard or locker and they've got to be secured within the vehicle. Again, very similar uh, to the previous requirements and that is the four categories of internal requirements covered lastly how to make the application to dvla to change your vehicle classification to motor caravan thank you for sticking with us for this long um, reading directly from the documents we've got Evidence needed to support your application. You must include the following evidence to support your application. A completed motor caravan checklist. We will leave a, a link for this document in the description below, as well as everything else we've done. A V5C showing one of the applicable body types as above. Remember those 14? You have to send your V5C in and it has to include one of those 14 classification types as previously described. Interior photos of each of the required features with the bed and table in the in use position. The photos must show that there are two or more windows providing daylight into the main living accommodation on at least one side of the main body. There we go. Exterior photos from the front, both sides and rear with the registration plates clearly visible a photo showing the vehicle identification number, VIN, or the chassis number stamped on the plate attached to the original chassis or vehicle body shell. So, first thing we're gonna cover then is the motor caravan checklist. Link down below. You must send the following. Use the tick box to confirm. DVLA will consider changing the body type classification of your vehicle to motor caravan. 
if your vehicle's exterior is distinguishable as a motor caravan in traffic again it's going back to that point your vehicle if you want to get that classification needs to look like a motor Documents and photographs, again, V5C registration, logbook, photos of the outside of the vehicle, photos of the inside of the vehicle. Uh, that includes the seats and table, sleeping accommodation, cooking facilities, storage area, two or more windows on at least one side of the main body. Photos of the vehicle identification number. It goes on to say the permanent external features, and again, this sentence is very important. The photos you send us need to evidence that your vehicle has a combination of the following permanent external features. Please use the tick boxes below to tell us which features are present on your vehicle. And then it goes into all of the points we've previously mentioned. The windows, the access door, the caravan style graphics, awning, bar, high top roof. You then have to declare that you've checked all the information and it's to the best of your knowledge, it's correct. Sign, print, date. So thank you very much for sticking with us. What do we think about that? I would love to hear your comments. Uh, see your comments down below. What we are taking from that is that um, the DVLA have now set up new requirements for your car vehicle to be one, recognized as a motor caravan and two, reclassified as a motor caravan by the body type. Now, to be recognized as a motor caravan, you need to comply with the four categories for internal features. To have the body type reclassified as a motor caravan, you need to comply with the permanent external features, such as the windows, the doors, the awning bar, the graphics, and the roof. I don't know anybody personally who has had a cam motor caravan reclassified successfully since the 21st of October. It is the 31st of October as we're filming this. Um, it will be very, very interesting to see how the new guidelines play out. Um, it seems to me like the days of stealth camper vans may well be over. Um, if you want to reclassify that vehicle as a motor caravan, but bottom line is, if you want to change the classification of your vehicle to motor caravan, you need to comply with the requirements of the DVLA. The main thing being your vehicle exterior needs to be distinguishable as a motor caravan in traffic. And that's the biggest change here. The vehicle needs to be distinguishable as a motor caravan in traffic. So good luck. Take the information I've explain to you on board, re-watch the video as many times as you need to, download those uh, documents that you can find in the description down below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Please, please leave comments down below in the description. And thanks again for sticking with us this long. It's a totally different video than we'd normally do. If you want to see more videos of how you can convert your camper van yourself, please look at both of these videos down here. Look also down below in the playlist section and please don't forget to give us a subscribe and hit the bell, which will mean that you get notifications every time we upload one of our videos. Thank you very much.